It's a new week, a new video, and a new hot penny stock. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Monday, April 15th. Now, what I like to do on this show is share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every single day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm always looking for stocks that have heat, that have potential to make us money. Now, you can find heat in a lot of different places. You can find it in market sentiment, as in the cannabis sector. You can go to the news and find heat, but that can be pretty subjective. Is this hot? Is it not? Or you can do what I like to do most of the time and just go straight to the charts. That's pretty definitive. You can see if there's a breakout setup. You can see if there's been a strong run or some big bounces. You can see heat in the chart at just a glance. Well, these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you, and I got one for you right now. This is SMX, also known as Security Matters Public Limited. I did find this stock by looking at the charts. And I got to tell you what, it isn't always fun picking a stock looking at the charts because there's so many of them. Folks, I love just sitting here watching a movie on one screen and going through my four-hour charts looking for breakouts, looking for setups, and they just jump out at you without you having to really pay attention. Commercials are great for doing due diligence in the evening. Well, this stock has a hot chart. She's got what I call an atypical breakout chart. That's when you've got that 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious, price up underneath it, both of them pretty much running together. Then that starts to level off the 200, and at that point, the price wants to come up to it and break out. And that's exactly what we got going on right now. Now, the reason we're really looking at the company beyond the hot chart is that she is pre-revenue, meaning she's not making any money right now, but she's about to, and she has got some hot technology that I think thousands of companies are going to be making use of here in a very short period of time. I think this company is one to watch in the short run and the long run. So we've looked at this before, SMX. I looked at it in January, I think it was. It is worth looking at now again. Now, I don't think she's going to run tomorrow or the next day. I'm thinking she has heat. I think the next financial is going to show us revenues, which is going to be great because I think once the revenues start coming in, they're going to start coming in faster and faster. So SMX today, she finished today just under 16 cents and she was at about 11 and percent gains, which was about one and a half cents up. She is on the NASDAQ. That's a bonus. You got to love penny stocks on the major exchanges, folks. You don't have to put up with all the BS that you have down on the OTC with information. You got lots of information up on the NASDAQ. That makes it safe, transparent at least. Plus, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchanges. And you get the extra play time. Pre-market, aftermarket. You can trade this. You can't do that with any OTC stock. Now, you don't need any special permissions or qualifications to trade pre-market or aftermarket. Just get in there and trade. The one thing I'll tell you, though, remember it's not a day trade. It's an extended hour trade. And I don't know how your broker sets it up, but you got to get it in the box. Change day trade to day plus extended hours or uh, after hours or whatever they use. You got to get that in there or it's just not going to see your order. So, what is SMX all about? Well, this is the great stuff. Now, they have some really great technology that is broad. It covers a lot of spectrums in the way they use it. And rather than try to explain it all, what I'm going to do here is get a bit redundant. I am going to use their description from three different places. We've got one here, we've got one on their website, and we've got one in a press release. And each one says basically the same thing, but they say it in different ways, giving us other information. And I think it's worth a read for all three. So we're going to start with this one. SMX is the next generation solution to address the anti-counterfeit brand protection, client liability, and track and trace markets. The company has developed a suite of integrated solutions to solve both authentication and track and trace challenges in order to uphold supply chain integrity, integrity and provide quality assurance and brand accountability to producers of goods. So they've got a way of marking goods so that you can know they're authentic. 
that's great. There's a lot of fakes out there and you don't know they're fakes, but they mark them in ways you'd never know. You can't see their markings, so you can't copy their markings. And even if you could see them, you still couldn't copy them. Let's move on to that next description. This one comes from their website, smx.tech. SMX possesses a breakthrough technology that tracks, traces, authenticates, and verifies both physically and digitally at every stage along the value chain from the raw materials to the manufacturing supply chain to distribution, retail and end of life, the recycling, enabling full supply chain transparency and a tangible, sustainable circularity, <laughs> circularity in a measurable and credible way. So they are marking the materials at every point and we know what's going on. Like for example, the origin from the very get go, minerals, silver, lithium, they can actually mark these at their origins. So when they get through the processing facilities and go to each of their respective manufacturers for whatever products they're going to make, you'll know this material is in those products because it is always identifiable and recognizable with the right technology. And in that marking is information, the brand owner, where it came from, how many times it's been through the recycling. And that information is stored on the blockchain where it's available to anybody everywhere 24 seven. Now the other piece of information comes from their news press. SMX integrates chemistry, physics, and computer science to give materials memory and create a culture of transparency and trust across multiple industries. I can't think of an industry except maybe FinTech that they're not involved with. The company's nearly 100 patents support unique markings, measuring and tracking technologies, allowing clients to seamlessly deploy transparency at all levels of deployment and provide all stakeholders with a complete providence of material composition and history from the virgin material to the recycled end to address manufacturing challenges and ESG goals while maintaining sustainable growth. As a result, SMX's technologies help companies address ESG commitments and transition more successfully to a low carbon economy. They have got many different technologies for invisibly marking materials. If you are working with a mineral, an ore, they have an additive that they put inside, which obviously isn't changing the integrity of the metals. And this can be recognized and read in any item that they make it with. They do this for a variety of products, including plastics, electronics, precious metals, agriculture, food, beverage, Honestly, we couldn't give you an exhausted list. You can use it for parts in an airplane to make sure you're getting this critical part that you absolutely need to hold up under pressure from Israel or Lockheed Martin rather than some island off the coast of China. You can tell just by scanning it. But <laughs> they've gone beyond that. Check this out. I happened to stumble across this and this is what you call technology. Earlier this year, the company confirmed that its marker technology had been successfully applied to technology to mark cotton plants at the seed stage, allowing cotton fabrics to be more easily tracked through the supply chain. Folks, they're marking cotton before cotton's even grown. They are getting into the DNA somehow. That's what I'm presuming. They don't actually say the word DNA here, but they're changing some molecular structure in there that is going to be passed on to the cotton so that nothing you do can hide that. And you will always know where that cotton came from because it's marked permanently. And because of this technology, they just secured a deal. It is a big deal with Louis Vuitton. You know who Louis Vuitton is? <laughs> It's a big global brand with an ugly pattern. It seems everything they make is tan brown and it's got their logo of their initials all over it. Well, this company's products is very expensive and it is constantly being counterfeited. I know that for fact. I'm not going to tell you how, but I know that for fact. 
And to check the authenticity, people know the details, how much overlay there is on the cut and the seam, the stitch, how big each stitch is. They know all this. Well, you're not going to have to count stitches anymore. You're just going to have to read the material and it'll be right there in the cotton. And the company's got other deals we're going to take a look at in the news and some more information we'll get from the filings. But right now, let's go take a look at that stock. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Eesh, dropped just a little bit, uh, maybe one sixth. <laughs> you know, she went from 6.5 million down to 6 million. Not a great day, but she still took gains, right? So we can't complain about that. Share structure for the company. Oh my God. Do you see that folks? Look at that. One million. One million shares outstanding. Our float is never ever higher than the outstanding. It's impossible. So we know our float is no higher than 1,026,000. Well, the danger point here is, is that it can't be under 1 million. That is the absolute lowest amount you can have in your float on the NASDAQ. And if you don't have enough in the float and you don't fix it, do you believe they'll actually kick you off the NASDAQ down to the OTC? They will. Now, I don't know what the float is. The float can be really hard to find with these major exchange stocks, but I'm hoping it's over a million. Now, how will they fix it if it's not over a million? Well, that's easy. You just have a public offering. You just put more shares on the market and voila, you fix that problem. So we're really not worried that it's not going to be there. But as it stands right now, it is a extremely low float. And what happens with an extremely low float is you normally end up with an extremely low market cap because the market cap, which is only $145,000, is figured out by taking all of the shares and multiplying it times the price. That's it. Shares times price gives you market cap and it's really low right now. Taking a look at the financials, I told you they're pre-revenue. They don't have any money coming in right now. We are waiting for the annual report, I guess, for 2023. Maybe it's out. We'll look at the, the uh, filings here and see. We don't have anything here for 2023. I didn't notice that before. Not a thing here. Let's see what the balance sheet says. Well, that too is 2022. So this is all rather old. 2022, we had $1.3 million in the bank. Uh, assets, about $11.2 million. And total liabilities at that time were $9 million. So two years ago, we had $2 million in stockholder equity. But what about now? Let's see if we have a financial that just came out. No, I don't see a financial here. Let's go back a little bit further. Now, let's see. With this company, if it is a foreign company, it is, see here, Ireland, Dublin, Ireland. That means we're not looking for a 10K. We're going to be looking for an F20 or an F something or other. And I got to tell you, they are difficult to read because there's a lot of international laws that have to be discussed in there. So I don't see it at the top of my head here. It's just not jumping out at me. But I did go through all of these 6Ks here. 6Ks are a lot like 8Ks. You can get a lot of good information in them. And I found two of them that are worthy of sharing with you. This one. On April 11th, 2024, SMX sold to an institutional investor a promissory note and warrants for gross proceeds of about $2 million. So they just had an investor buy some warrants and give them a promissory note and the company got $2 million. So somebody's investing in the company and the company now has money. That's all good news. The other one, now I am surprised this is a very important piece of information and I can't see a news press on it. And why wouldn't they? On March 20th of this year, the company posted, I didn't see the post, that it was excited to share a pilot program with Pepsi to deter counterfeiting and ensure the company's product authenticity is complete. With the success of the initial tests, the parties are now working to evaluate the opportunity to scale the technology across their operations. Folks, Pepsi is a global operation that is going to be a huge contract. Now think about that. How many huge companies are out there? I mean, anybody, 
anybody who's afraid to be copyrighted, you know, like, uh, Nike, for example, or Louis Vuitton or anybody. I mean, my mind's going blank here, but I know there's a thousand names I could give you. And when they get those contracts, it's not going to be just a few products. It's not going to be a few areas. It's going to be everything. When they get in, it is going to be submersion. And I think they're going to literally have thousands of contracts with thousands of big companies that are employing their, their technology. Now, there's something you have to remember here. They're also changing the green conscientiousness of all these corporations. The whole point of this is to recycle everything. From its place of origin, it is monitored. We know where all of that original material is going so that when it gets to their retail distribution centers, it can be scanned and made sure it's not counterfeit. But ultimately, at the end of its life, and it's going to be telling you inside the product how long it is that it, you can use it before it needs to be recycled, it will end up at the recycling center and get a new mark put on it at that point. And then that is going to be recycled back to the beginning. And all of that history will be maintained for the blockchain so that anybody can see it at any time. And the big deal about this is, is that green conscientiousness is being paid. Carbon credits is money for those people helping stop carbon production or elimination of carbon, whether it be through EVs or hydrogen or plastic recycling. If you can make the world greener, they'll pay you for it. And now, since it's all ledgered, ledgered everything that everybody is doing, they'll get compensation for. So everybody's going to want a part of this because they want to get paid. That's what I see going on here. All right. So that takes care of the uh, filings. We've got news to look at. Now, they said they posted it. I'm looking for any Pepsi news here. I did go through this once. I don't see anything about Pepsi. Where did they post it? On their Twitter account? And they did say post. They didn't say press release. So, I am looking at news here just for this year. I've gone back to January 31st. And basically, we are just looking at the uh, headlines for these. There's one we'll jump into, but I want you to see they're making deals. And when you make a deal, it's for money. You're not working for free. So even though we don't see any money on the books yet, it is developing right now. They're working for that money. It's not going to show up now. It'll show up in the next financial. January 31st, the company spearheads sustainable fashion at Premier Vision Paris. They're showing this off. You know, when people in Paris want to protect their goods from being copied, this is where the expensive garbs come from. I would expect some contracts coming out of that. At the end of February, the company demonstrated how the technolo technology can enhance recycling and advance circularity. And that's the big one there, folks. Yes, anti-counterfeiting is going to be big business. Everybody wants to protect their goods. But the whole world, for the most part, is going green and they're getting paid for it. So that's going to be huge. And this company will be at the hub of thousands of other companies monitoring all their information so that it can be used by whomever needs it so that these people can get paid. Let's see here. At the end of March, the company announces full industrial marking process for the steel industry. The most recent piece of news up here is for the silver industry. They are taking some particle. I don't know what it is. It's a secret. <laughs> and they actually drop it into the metal and it's not bothering the metal at all. And they can read it from that point on forever. It's in the metal. And the last piece of news that came out April 10th, the company announced its full industrial marking process for natural rubber for vehicle and truck tires. Wow. That's a whole nother huge dynamic sector. And we do need to recycle tires. There are mountains of tires around the world. I've seen them in Detroit. They are huge. So the company's working with all of these different industries and we're just starting to scratch the surface. There's so much we have not even talked about that they're going to be getting involved with. But think about this. They can take a piece of plastic and it's nice and smooth on this side embed this information inside it, press it even. You could see that, but then they put another piece of plastic over it. 
Now it's smooth on both sides and you can't see anything, but using the right technology and scanning it, all that information is available. They can use it on cotton before cotton is even growing. They can put it into metals and I don't know how they're working with the Pepsi products. Obviously you're not going to put it in the soda. You're going to put it on the can. How are they going to do that? I would like to get more information about this. This is going to be an interesting one to do due diligence on. And the one piece of news I do want to share with you, I didn't even highlight. Security Matters leverages 2023 achievements to accelerate 2024 growth. They give us a nice little breakdown here of things that have happened since the beginning of the year, things that aren't in the press releases. We're going to start from the back, which is the oldest to move up. January of this year, the company secured a significant $5 million contract with RI to enhance NATO supply chain transparency. This achievement underscores the company's expertise and trusted solutions in securing complex supply chains. What would they be marking for NATO? Definitely deserve some more research there. Another highlight in January, the company showcased its commitment to sustainable fashion at Premier Vision Paris. We read that. The event highlighted the company's role in promoting eco-friendly practices in the fashion industry. In February, the company successfully closed a $2.9 million public offering. Ah, maybe the float was under a million. That's not a very big offering. I mean, I'm happy to see that, but I'm thinking that's probably why they needed it was just to get that float up. So whatever the float is, it's not going to be very big. It's still going to be under 10 million the way I see it. I haven't done the math yet, but $2.9 million public offering doesn't seem very big to me. Two more here in February, one on the 21st. The company launched a project demonstrating its technology to enhance recycling processes and promote circular economy practices. This initiative underlines the company's commitment to environmental sustainability. I'm telling you, this recycling program is going to be huge, way bigger than anti-counterfeiting. And the last thing they've got here, on February 28th of this year, the company announced the appointment of Afira Barr as the new chief financial officer. This strategic move will strengthen the company's financial management and support growth initiatives. So we've had some big wigs come in. I was reading a little bit about him. He does have experience. He's a good man for the job, it seems. They've just got some money coming in from uh, their public offering. They had that other $2 million that came in from the investor that bought warrants and the promissory note. So that's virtually $5 million they've got to work with now. We see a contract here for $5 million already. We know money is coming in, just isn't going to show up yet. We have to wait for the next financial. So everything is looking superb for the company. They are growing. Money is coming in. We just don't see it yet. They're making deals with silver. They're making deals with steel. They're making deals with cotton. And God only knows what else. Can you see how excited I am here? Because I can't even see the ends of this. It goes beyond the horizon. And that excites me. As I said, I think this company's been going to be great for some short holds, but I think it's going to be outstanding for a long hold. But speaking of short holds, the chart is set up for a breakout right now. Let's go check that out. Let's take a look now at SMX on my free trading platform, TOS. That's think or swim. I've got this opened up to a one day, one year chart, and we've got a really impressive high bubble here, folks. $58.96 a year ago in April, and I don't believe it for one second. Not that I can find it. I looked around, but I am sure this company's done a reverse split. I can't find the information in the normal places I look, but think about it. We've got an outstanding share count of a million. That sounds to me like they did a reverse split sometime. I just don't know when. Now, normally I'd be looking for a big green bar for the day they did that split where the price was pushed up. Well, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> they used to. Every now and then you'll see a green bar and then a week later it disappears. It's like, where'd that go? Well, what they do now is adjust the charts and I hate it. From the day of the reverse split back, everything has changed. Everything is multiplied by the ratio of the reverse split. So if the reverse split was a 1 in 10, whatever the prices were those days, they're multiplied by 10. So this high bubble of 
$58 may have just been a high of $5.80. But after the reverse split and multiplying it all out, that's what you end up with. And that's what goes on the charts. Everybody's going to see that whether they know or not, it's not real. They're going to think it's real. That's a lie. That's false information. I hate them doing that. And I don't believe it right now. So we're just going to bypass that. And we're going to come right on down to that six month, four hour. And the real reason I wanted to show that to you is so I could answer a question. Why is this 200 day SMA falling out of the sky like that? Now, you know, so on our six month chart here, our high is $3 and 87 cents, which she hit October of last year. And that was about a hundred percent jump. She went from about a dollar 30 up to, oh man, it's more than that. That is a 300% jump dollar 30 up to almost 390. Then she came back down, laid on the 200 for a while, slipped underneath it and she kept falling. And it was right around this area that we looked at her. Now I've got some supports and resistances drawn in here. If you care to know what they are, we are at 31, 41, 61 and 83. How convenient. So we looked at it right here. That was at the end of January and it was roughly 35 cents when we looked at it. Two days later, she was up to 56 cents and about a week later, she was up to 62 cents, but there was some volatility in all of that, but we could have grabbed some gains after we looked at it, but you can see she was deep underneath the 200 at that time. So we weren't looking at it for a breakout. She is showing interest. We see her popping through that 200 as she's coming down over and over again. And right here, she just started going sideways after this last big pop, which we love to see these spikes, just the wick that go through the 200, the higher, the better. When these come back down and we're expecting them to come back down fast, virtually immediately, we watch for them to come back down no lower than where it started from just the first bar, the very next bar. If it comes down higher than where it started, far as I'm concerned, that's a token sign. She's looking for an opportunity to climb. What is that opportunity? Technicals more to the point, a flat 200 day SMA. And that's what that spike does. The higher it gets, the more it tugs on that 200 and making it flat so that she has an opportunity to run. So she came down higher than where she started, did dip down. I'm not worried about this. I'm just watching now. She's going sideways, riding on her 50 day SMA, looking like she's doing nothing, but she isn't doing nothing. She's being patient. She's biding time, waiting for this 200 to get closer. Now what we expect is another one of these big spikes, these directional intentional spikes that's going to push through there way high and yank that 200 up. So she'll go flat and then she's probably going to jump up on top of it. But the first breakthrough isn't a breakthrough. That's normally to get up on top and she's going to bounce around on it a couple of times, make sure it's secure before she builds on it. And then she'll start to run. And soon, I don't know when we need to see their annual financials for 2023. There should be money generated right now. Maybe there is some money already on the table that I'm not aware of, but it is coming folks. And this company's potential with their technology and all the different industries that they can work with all the thousands of companies and corporations that they can deal with, not just in America, but anywhere in the world. It's exciting folks. This company could be dynamically huge. So we've got a nice breakout scenario here. She is getting close to the 200. Our 200 day haul is coming up. This has as much power and authority on the board as the 200 day SMA. And we see in many cases, penny stocks will drop to this and then push right off of the 200 haul to get on top of the 200 day SMA. So if you see her drop to the 200, I wouldn't get scared. I get excited. What do our oscillators say? Well, everything is looking nice. Our PPO that is climbing on top of the pink line, our MACD, which you read the same, that's also climbing. Our RSI is a bit cool right now and just tinging down. She's at 53. 
Our volume was pretty light today, but it was growing through the day. It was getting stronger and stronger. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So there's that big jump way up here and then back down, hitting this low bubble and then going sideways. Now we can see she is trying to meangle with this 200 day SMA. She doesn't want to fall away from it, but she hasn't got the mind to start running yet. So she's just all over it. At this very moment, things look like she could launch. I mean, all of our SMAs are over the 200 and all pointing up now, except for the nine day. However, She's on top of the nine day. You can't climb unless you're on top of the nine. So she's in the right place, but our oscillators say she's got some more down pressure coming right now. We can see that. What I do see here, these big bars that have long wicks. I love these long wicks. They tell stories when they go through multiple SMAs and then deep underneath one of them and come right back up. I expect to climb. To me, this is like a foundation, a pillar. You're building a bridge and you want to make it solid. So they've got to go in deep, but they come right back up really, really fast. Well, we got to climb off of that one. Well, now we've got another one, not as big, right? But she did go through the 20, pushing deep underneath that 20 and coming back up. Now we've got the stretch ones up here showing initiative. So you got digging down to solid yourself and eagerness. So I'm liking the way she's looking right now, except the oscillators say she is still pushing down right now. What's the five day, five minutes say? We've got to change a trend here, don't we? Our 200 day SMA was falling. She was underneath it. She got up on top, bounced on it a bunch to make sure it wasn't going to go anywhere. Then took this big pounce way up high so she could tug that 200 up so that she could start bouncing off of it uphill. This looks like she's starting to climb, like she wants to climb, like she could have a long run. And if the financials are a piece of news, now think about that. Every deal they do could be a piece of news. If there's a thousand companies they do deals with, they're going to be printing that. Why they didn't print Pepsi, I don't know. But maybe they'll print it when a solid contract is put on the market, you know? So there's going to be a lot of catalysts with this company. And she's probably going to have a lot of volatility, especially now when she's only got a million shares. A million. So right now we could see a lot of bounces. In those bounces, you can make money. You don't have to wait for her to hit the ceiling. You take a bounce, she falls down deep buy back in cheap. She starts to rip, sell on the way up. Don't wait for her to come down. You're taking gains. You're not taking maximum gains. You're taking gains. Just get used to taking gains every day and don't worry about what you leave on the table. Nobody goes broke leaving money on the table. Occasionally, one's going to go way further than you ever thought. But more often than not, if you try to get the most out of your plays, you're going to end up getting taken because you're going to roll around the top and fall and say, darn, I could have had so much more. Get used to selling as she's rising. This is looking good on the chart. Our oscillators say she's got negative down pressure right now. I mean, we had a crossover here right at the end of the day. Things started looking strong. That big bar right there really pushed down hard and we don't have any wick on it. Those are the scary bars, the solid bars that go deep. They're scary. The wicks I read, but I don't like that. I can tell the fortune of what that is. She's coming down, probably going to come down to this 200 again before she bounces. But I do think she's ready to climb. And I do think she requires a lot more due diligence from you folks. This is a company I said at the beginning, I like for a short run and I like for the long run, especially for the long run. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.